Okay, so rainy old weekend and I've been stuck right into working on both cars, the Raptor and the F truck, trying to get them knocked out and things I have to do to them. I've kind of bitten off more than I can chew at the moment with the F truck especially. That thing is in a million pieces and I don't know where half the stuff has gone, but anyway, we're getting it ready to go to paint. So also this afternoon, what we're gonna be doing is getting the battery and everything started on the Raptor. So we're doing the dual battery system this afternoon. We're gonna get that started. And the first part of that is fitting the new custom lithium 200 amp hour battery, this one here. This will be going behind the seat in the Raptor. So let's go ahead and get this thing fitted up. Uh, behind the vent there, so done my cut out. So there we go, see if I've cut enough of this interior trim. Yeah. So what's my ultimate goal with fitting power into the Raptor? Well, we're gonna try to uh, do it as clean as possible. Don't wanna have like a battery box and stuff in the back of the tub. And I think a lot of people now are trying to move with, if they're not necessarily putting a train canopy on their vehicle, they're definitely trying to do a clean tub install or something under the rear seat or behind the rear seat and trying to hide all these components uh, that we need to fit in order to have a dual battery in the back of a, a dual cab ute. So first parts of the battery install, we're gonna get this in behind the seat. We're gonna go through instructions and find out exactly what's involved in getting this thing fitted. And we're gonna go through step by step and show you guys how to get this battery in behind the seat. And then the next part of the power install will be running all of our cabling. So we've got some different components from a few other companies that are gonna work in well with uh, running fuses and stuff on top of the battery. And then we also have a new product from Mitz Alloy that we're gonna be running Running, which is a fully integrated plug and play 12 volt system. This thing is badass and I can't wait to show you guys exactly what uh, Mitz Alloy's come up with. And it's all integrated with the Red Arc equipment, so great gear inside of it. But the simplicity of this thing is a dual battery all in this one box and it is so easy to fit yourself. Okay, so let's have a geese in here behind the back seat. So as you can see, I live on a very dusty road. You see all the dust that's coming in and another part of the custom lithium battery is that you'll actually get a new vent that's going to hopefully stop this dust from coming in the back of the raptor here so we're going to go ahead now and we're going to pull out the jack and a few other bits and pieces we do have to trim some of the uh, carpet in here and we'll get this battery mounted but first part is to we'll go and get the instructions first part is to remove this section through here so that way we can get to the nuts and bolts and, and get this thing fitted. So we have the custom lithium 200 amp hour battery, but then you also do get this part here, which is to replace the rear filter uh, section on the back of the Raptor. So hopefully this is gonna stop a lot more dust than what we're currently seeing in the back of the Raptor at the moment. So this is gonna replace that rear vent for us and also help us get the, uh, the lithium battery in here. So we do have some instructions and stuff here that the unit does come with. So it does come with instructions. And then you can also opt for the Osmotion bracket for your uh, like DC-DC charger, Red Arc charger. I'm not gonna need this uh, because of the new Mitz Alloy thing that I'm gonna fit, which I can't wait to show you guys. It's absolutely sick what they've done. Dropping the rear seat, we're gonna be removing the jack and then we're gonna be removing the trim uh, throughout the back of the seat there and then dropping our battery down inside. And yeah, you can just go through step by step on this thing to get this battery installed. Uh, super easy instructions. So the first thing we have to do is to remove the uh, rear jack out of here and then I do have a new relocation bracket for the jack that I will be installing in the tub here at a later stage as you can see living on a dusty road gotta pull that uh that last little section down there out as well this little foam piece so we'll take that with us okay so down here this is your factory jack bracket just down in here so there's this little tiny tab just here that we're going to have to need to uh, push down flat um, according to the instructions that way the battery can actually fit flush down here on the floor so we'll go ahead now and we'll get a mallet and we'll just bend that little tab down so pretty straightforward so when I see YouTube videos, one thing I like to see is actually how you get the trims out. So I've already removed this panel here before, but how you get these out is you basically just pull them straight up and out. That way you don't break them. So they just come directly up. So you pull them directly up and out. 
and then your seat belts there will come down. We'll go ahead now and we'll pop this one. You can see that's what I've already got that one popped. So that just comes directly straight up. So pull it straight up, same as the back one. And then we can get into removing this center section and removing this back section here. Okay, so we've just popped those sections up. This bit here will pretty much just pull straight back towards you. And then the rest of this section here will just pop pop out a little bit. I had to do it one-handed, but just pop, pull it out directly towards you. There's a little Easter egg there, old ranger symbol. It's pretty cool. If you haven't noticed that before. And so there we have this trim section is now free. So we can move that out of the way while we get the battery uh, dropped in here. We're going to remove, be removing this lug here, I think, and also this Torx bit to be able to put the battery in. So we have a T40 uh, Torx bit here, removing this. The, uh, the anchor point here for the back of the seat to clip into. Okay, so we've just moved the top mounting bracket up here. We've also moved one of the ISO fix points just here. And we're just gonna now use our trim removal tool. Uh, if you don't have a set of trim removal tools, you can get on my Amazon store. I do sell a bunch of different um, cool little uh, tools and stuff for your toolbox for working on your own car. Just makes it a lot easier to get things like that out without trying to pull and damage, potentially damage anything else in the vehicle as well. So yeah, these are, these are a really good tool to have. So I'm gonna go one little step further. I've actually moved this interior trim. So you can see the clips there. It pulls directly out towards the seat. And then the bottom section down here, it just comes directly up. So I'm just gonna remove that out of the, the Raptor for a second. That's just gonna make it a bit easier for me to get in here and actually pull this forward to get to that air vent just there. Like how much dust has been getting let into the Raptor from this, this shonky vent. So we're just gonna pop that out and then we're gonna bring that back into the car like so. And yeah, as you can tell, it's not very good at sealing the dust. Kind of, yeah, it's uh, it's designed to open when you close your doors. So when you slam your doors, the pressure from in the cab pushes these vents out and open. So here we have our new custom lithium one. This one is much better or fabricated. It's very, very nice actually. These back plastic sections look like they're 3D printed or something. So very, very cool. Uh, but it's got double-sided tape. Wax and grease remover is what I use normally to clean the surface for any sort of 3M tape I'm gonna be putting down. So I'm gonna be cleaning the surface inside the back here. So we're gonna clean around that where the dust is, get it all cleaned up and ready to be able to, yeah, tack this thing down. So I think this thing is directional, as you, you know, you've got the uh, vents just here, so you want them pointing downwards. Uh, you don't want them facing up because any water that comes down through the back between the tub will then enter the back of the cab. So you definitely want these things facing downwards. So we're gonna go ahead and get that centered. Okay, so that's in now. Next job is to trim some of this uh, interior here. So essentially I'm trying to keep as much as the interior as I can. So I'm just gonna continue down. If you don't have a set of these things, these Sterling cutters, they are absolutely brilliant. Them as well as a Stanley blade. But these things I've been cutting uh, <laughs> all the sound deadening stuff with these today and also cutting the interior trim. These things are awesome. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna cut this square out and that way the rest of the interior trim can stay there and I can bolt the battery in straight out of the top. So that's roughly about the size of the square that I'm cutting out of it. So I've just measured the battery um, in line with the where the, it's gonna mount and then just gone about a centimeter past it, centimeter half past it uh, to the width of the battery, measured down. And I'm just gonna cut this square out. So the past few weeks, I've been spending a fair bit of time on the F truck actually putting sound deadener throughout the whole truck, uh, roof, doors, all the rest of it. So I've got a bunch of leftover stuff, which I'm gonna actually fit 
in the Raptor now behind the battery so that way I don't have to pull it back out later to do a full sound dead and install. Um, I'll probably just end up doing the doors and probably the roof and things like that, but at least half of the back section here will be done. I'll only have to do the other half over the other side, but again, there's an amp and stuff over there, so I don't know how much I'm gonna actually get fitted over there unless I pull everything out. But for right now, I'm gonna use all this spare stuff that I have to basically sound dead and around the vent here and in behind the battery, so that way, that section at least is kind of all done. I don't have to pull it back out again. Okay, so I've got uh, all my sound editing in there around there where the battery's going to go. I'm going to do this side over here later on. I just don't have time today. Plus, I've kind of ran out of this, ran out of the material, the car builder's material. So I've, I've had enough to do the whole battery area, which is good, uh, behind the vent there. So I've done my cutout, and now we're just going to move on to dropping the battery in here and seeing if it all fits. Now this could be, I could have to take this back out again in a minute, but I'm not sure. We're just gonna have to see how we go, see if I've cut enough of this interior trim out. Essentially, it's gonna sit in there like this. I'm just trying to figure out how that bottom section sits in there whether it's just like that or whether it's that seems a bit better so yeah like tilt the battery out towards the back of the wall here and then back in and it kind of drops down into place but that is that is secure as that is not going anywhere now and I think it's better that you actually leave the interior, some of the interior trim. It'll just stop any sort of vibration or anything like that. But we have cut that absolutely perfectly. Let's go ahead and just uh, nip our bolts up. And that's it. That's in. So, yeah, basically just uh, as you can see, the interior trim down there. <laughs> Done pretty well. Only measured once too. How much cleaner that is rather than cutting the whole lot out actually cut in and cut around it but that battery is not going anywhere i really like that with how secure that is that thing there is no movement in that whatsoever very very impressed on how good that is so now we go ahead and get the trims back in and then we'll uh i'll have to get all my cabling this week and then also waiting for our mitts our new mitts set up to show up for the tub and exactly how that's going to go and working with the custom lithium battery but yeah that's it that's it installed how good does that look yeah so secure there is no way that is going absolutely anywhere it's hidden no one knows it's there once you put the seat up it is gone but you have a 200 amp hour lithium battery inside the back of your raptor all hidden behind the back seat there cannot even do not even know that I have a 200 amp lithium battery behind the Raptor seat, which is pretty cool. The fact that it's that's just so used to having these big bulky batteries and trying to find somewhere to put them. The fact that this is all hidden away and you don't even know it's there is is pretty sweet. So next part we need to get on to is that this is kind of there's a multiple parts of this build that need to go together at the same time just for the fact of where I need to put things. So next part of this, the battery's installed, but now we're gonna be doing some tub fit out. So basically we're gonna try and be sealing up the tub. We've got a bed rug. If you haven't heard of bed rug, they're absolutely awesome. I used to have one in the F truck before I fitted a tray and canopy to it. We're gonna to have to get the EGR dust buster kit, I think it's called. We're gonna be fitting that to the back. We're gonna be plugging all the holes and trying to reduce the dust inside of here the best I possibly can. And then we're gonna be fitting the Osmotion Molly panels. So Osmotion has supplied all their Molly panels to go inside the tub for mounting bags and, and hoses and all sorts of bits and pieces. And just being able, you'll be able to utilize all the tub space way better than just being plain, ordinary walls of the tub. So we've got those to go in and then we'll come onto the end part of the power install because there's things I need to mount to the Molly panel. So it's super hard to seal a tub. Uh, I've had many dual cabs over my life and sealing a tub is 
very very difficult because the way they're formed in the factory there's many holes for water to get out and things like that so we're going to go through and we're going to plug all the little holes that we have in it with like a rubber grommet kit that you can get off ebay we're going to go through plug all the holes that we can find the bed rug is going to do a great job of sealing everything and stopping dust kind of coming in then floating around it's going to come through the wall of the tub hit the bed rug and then kind of stop at that that point uh, well this as far as my experience when I had one set up on the back of the F truck when it had the tub on it I didn't get a lot of dust which is really good okay so this is how the bed rug comes in this big brown box so I've got it laying out right now just in the sun just to relax because it's been like rolled right up so I'm just leaving it out here for the minute but as you can see they do have the cutouts kind of pre-marked for you so there's the one of the LED lights the factory LED lights that's that rear power section in the back and then as you can see it kind of sits in all the ribs and everything that's on the back of the truck and then you kind of just it just uh it zips together so once you get your sides in you pull your floor up and then the whole floor base zips in together and then the tailgate gets velcroed on as well so these are really good if you don't have like a like if you've just got bare metal in the back of your ute um, that's the best option to adhere this I have a factory bed liner uh, sprayed in, so this will still work. I've just got to do some really good prep work to make that sure that these stick properly. But yeah, so essentially they do have all the cutouts, which is really good. I wasn't sure if this one did, but just notch that out with a Stanley knife, and then I can put my power thing back in the other side, put my lights in. But yeah, I'll just let it uh, let it sit here and relax. But this is the material. So it looks like carpet. It's like marine carpet, but it's actually a plastic weave. So it's all plastic fibers. It's not. It's not going to go moldy or mildew or anything like that and, and testament i had it in the f truck so i know that it's not going to do any of those things because i you could spill fuel on this oils and it won't stain or anything like that you just hose it out so it's pretty good or ford must have got a really good deal on loctite because these things have so much loctite in there and they are so hard to get out i don't know wish me luck but... Yep, that works too bad, just don't go too hard on it, but just to give it a little bit of time. There you go. Okay, so uh, I'll show you these lights, because I couldn't figure out how to get these lights out, but basically you just push them up. So see those rear tabs? I always like it when people on YouTube show me how to get things out, so... Those rear tabs, that light sits in there like that, so you need to get in there with a little pick or something and just pop them out, or you can just pull it out this way. There should be enough flex in them not to break them off, but that's how those lights come out. Okay, so that's it. So you can see the zipper just here. So it just, it just zips together all the way around and then creates, essentially, yeah, a bed. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna cut these little light sections out here. I'm gonna cut these out that's where our lights are going to go where led bed lights and then the other side over there we have the power as well but the good thing about these two is once i fit the seal kit the dust buster kit from egr see this this flap here this sits in between the tailgate and the back of the bed and that's going to um, stop dust coming up too it was really good in the f truck so and then we're going to velcro this to the tailgate uh but I might try and see if I can maybe nuts it some things into the tailgate to help this be a bit more secure. It's perfect if you don't have a bed liner, uh, like I mentioned, because the 3M tape and the Velcro stick really well and does not go anywhere. Okay, so I've just uh, thrown the bed rug in here now. Now I've got to get up in here and like tuck it up underneath the roller shutter and fill it around the outside. Before I do that, but I'm going to drop these sides down. I'm going to cut these holes out. So these holes here will be for my power outlet and whatnot. And then there will be points like here where you'll be able to punch through for your uh, tie down points and things like that. There's another one there. So they're kind of divoted in. And then this will be the tailgate section just here. So I'll go ahead and get all this in and come back to you. Okay, so give you an update on where I am at so far. The issue is, is that 
when you have when you're trying because i'm trying to do the whole install and the trouble is that i can't just fit one thing at a time different things are conflicting with other things like uh, different products so it's kind of like you've just got to work your way through it and it's just very time consuming like i've been on this project nearly for the past two days fitting the battery the battery was fine behind the back of the seat but then i've got the egr roller shutter with the bed rug trying to maneuver it around it and that it conflicts in different places that the uh, drains and things come out of so i've got to cut holes and things like that and then i've got to cut certain holes where tie down points are everything's conflicting with everything but uh this is the next thing that's conflicting <laughs> so uh i wanted these panels these are from osmotion so these are like a molly panel that go in the tub themselves and they bolt all together and so it uses a lot of the tie down points to actually bolt these things together but then these are what i want to use to put packs and stuff on uh air leads things like that I want to be able to throw things in here and yeah the bed rug to me is just it's just awesome i've got to try and configure how to get the oz motion panels in here with a bed rug when it's not designed for one so it's going to take me a little bit of time definitely stressing me out to try and get all this stuff to work together but these these oz motion panels are absolutely sick so essentially you can buy the molly panels uh whatever you want from oz motion so you can uh, customize how you want it. They've also got some uh, little cages and stuff that I'm going to be probably putting in the corners here. Again, I've got to figure out how they all go together. There is a full Osmotion instruction uh, manual here as well on how to fit everything, where everything has to go. So I think there's some nut zerning you need to do up in the tub. But again, it's, it's trying to get these products to work with other products that they're probably not all designed like all these companies didn't get together and design all their stuff together so i've got to yeah work around everything undo some things and to bolt other things back in and work my around, way around it but we're going to get the osmotion panels molly panels put in but yeah there's osmotion.com if you want to check out the website i'll have all the links in the description for these guys if you want to jump over there and get some molly panels for your ranger or raptor Alright, so you guys will have to come back for part two of the uh, tub install, doing everything in the back of the tub, the molly panels, then we'll move on to the rest of the 12 volt install. Uh, this, is gonna be, this video will be too long if I put it all in one video, so stay tuned next week and I'll have that video out. So finishing this thing off with the Osmotion panels, then we've got the new product from its alloy, give you a sneaky look at that right now. So some pretty cool stuff to come on the back of this thing. And I don't know if you can see down there, just near my elbow, near my shoulder. Not the, the molly panels are sick. So, see you guys next week.